This is a HeadGum Podcast. Hello, everybody, and thank you so much for listening to this beautiful episode of my podcast. I just want to give a little trigger warning. We do talk about eating disorders, and I just care about you all. I want to let you know and give you a heads up. So if you are okay with that, continue listening. Bye. Hey, how you doing, though? Mama, let me whisper in your ear. Tell you something that you might like to hear. You got a sexy-ass body and your ass looks soft. Mind if I touch that and see if it's soft. Nah, I'm just playing unless you say I can. And I'm known to be a real nasty man. And they say a closed mouth don't get fed. So I don't mind asking for head. Hey, girl, wait till you see my dick. Wait till you see my dick. Hey, bitch, wait till you see my dick. I'm a beat that pussy up. I be like, damn, damn, bam, 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 bam. Beat the pussy up, beat the pussy up. 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 That was really good. That was all I was supporting. We could have done that for the whole show. You had to do the whole thing. That was hot. Hope it was. When they sing that live, that's a feat. It is. It is whispering. It's you have to have a lot of air. Whispering's also hard on your vocal cords. Yeah, I I, I realized like to talk that. Talk like this is yeah, actually like this. It's, it's, it is a strain, even though people don't think it is. Yeah, because you also have to articulate, right? Yeah, and you're still enunciating. You yeah. need people to know what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's. Wow. That's, hats off to the Ying Yang Twins. Mm-hmm. Ying Yang Twins. That song is called Wait. AKA the Whisper Song. Mm -hmm. The year is 2006. I love being in 2006. I'm wearing kind of a 2006 themed outfit today. Yes. For those of you that aren't watching this on YouTube, which is a shame, you should watch all these on YouTube because can you believe it's a free video of people that you pay to watch on television? Oh, so it's so visual. You started off so visual. I know. know? You're describing things. I know. You know? I'm in a white terry cloth mm-hmm. juicy couture original jumpsuit with some cowboy boots that i bought off of etsy for my wedding hell yeah and i'm just looking absolutely fabulous so i'm yeah. wearing a 2006 so that's the new twist that's like, the new twist because then 06 i didn't really see cowboy boots not where i lived no but you know what I, I i love to say what was happening in 2006 i'm doing trends i'm doing fashion trends because i really enjoy doing that unfortunately like there are all these lists on pinterest that are not really giving me what i want so i'm just gonna go to google images okay and we're gonna start off with the vest like remember when everyone was doing this oh and it, it's come back Yes, just vest. Just vest. Yeah, it's very sexy because it's yes. just like, yes, just skin vest. You're in that vest and people think, did you take that from your boyfriend's three-piece suit? Uh-huh, uh-huh. You yeah. know? What's he wearing then? Yeah. <laughs> What's he wearing on the underneath? <laughs> yeah. Oh, just a regular shirt. Just a regular shirt. Yeah, yeah. I got the vest. Is it like the boyfriend jean? It's the boyfriend vest. The huh? boyfriend vest. Absolutely it is. Mm. Also, remember when people used to show this much midriff? Because the low rise. What? Yeah. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm so more much. of a high pant person so yeah that was really hard for I could not can I say I think everything I think 2006 fashion trends are now like to me this is very reminiscent of trends we're seeing slapped in our faces now meanwhile you and I we don't want to show our belly buttons yeah, it's too low for me. I liked it on other people, you know? Yeah. It was a time where my mind was blown. Like, I was just like, all these celebrities, they have... I just walked around thinking they had long torsos. I was yeah. like, they have long-ass torsos, right? To be a star, they say you need a long torso. You need the long torso. Big head, long torso. Big head, long torso, short legs. Short, you... No, yes. Tiny Not, feet. Tiny feet. Big hands. Uh-huh. This is why you're on the TV. On the right track. (laughs) This is why you're on the TV. (laughs) No, because like Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera, I was like, whoa, their hips start so low. Yeah. There's most of their body. Yeah. And then just tiny legs, right? It's just like you can almost see like where pube would be. Yeah. But no pube found. No, because people were shaving. I I wasn't back then. Well, we're going to get into all of that. Yeah, my mind was being blown all the time. The last trend that I'm going to mention, and then I can't wait to chat with you all about our pubic hair situation. Uh 
<laughs> is this tight Bermuda short? Oh, Remember okay. that? Yes. Somehow we made it sexy and wow. that seems impossible. Yeah, I do remember that. So that's, it's like the tight jean, but you cut it off right at the knees. Cut it right at the knee, which honestly is so not flattering on anyone. Yeah. You know, some people could pull it off. Yeah, but. But like tight right here. Yeah, yeah. God. Where, where did it come from? Just like. Fishermen. Fishing, fishing people. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Fishing. Yeah. So that must have been hot. Then. That's always, it's, fishing is always hot. Fishing's hot. Because we always eat fish. We We're always, always going to eat it. Yes. Restaurants always need it. There's always a demand. There's always a demand for fish. But somebody during that time, TRL, somebody was like, hey, you know. Short pants to the knee, tight. My uncle wears this. Yes. What if I, Beyonce, wear Wore it? it? You know? Yeah. Yeah. And where were we when we were wearing short shorts to our knee? And who are we when we're thinking about the the stars with the longest torsos on earth? Yeah. We are in Venice, California. Mm. And my guest today is none other than Otsko. Yay, hey, it's me. I've already enjoyed our whole preamble to this gorgeous conversation we're about to have. I'm gonna crack oh, my crack LaCroix, it. not yeah. sponsored, but sponsor us. Okay, sucking down a pomplamoose like Please. it's 2016. Yes. Otsko, what was going on with you in high school? You Tell know, me all about it. Tell me, what were you, did you have a click? What was your high school like? What was right. going on with you? Because I know, just from knowing you, mm-hmm. that you have like a pretty interesting situation. No, for sure. For <laughs> sure. Yeah. That's why I've I've heard the other episodes. This is, I think, probably a trigger warning episode, too. Oh, <laughs> gosh. Okay. So Venice High School, you know, your girl was going to school. That wasn't even in my district. Yeah. It was like a school that... Because like, where were you? Were you living in the Valley? I was actually in uh, West Los Angeles. Okay. It's just generally, it's just called that. Mm-hmm. Every time I tell people, they go, yeah, where? I go... It's just West yeah, LA. Yeah, but where? And it's actually, I think, called West LA. Cool. So I was living there, but then Venice High School, like, bust people in. So there were kids from Chinatown, Inglewood, Crenshaw. It was cool because it was like, I got to see, like, a bigger world mm-hmm. instead of just folks that lived in my zip code or whatever including me i didn't i wasn't supposed to i didn't live in venice right um and so yeah so i went there because i decided to go there because i thought a couple of my friends were going there and then last minute they changed their mind (laughs) really so you were just left high and dry i was like what you're Hold on. Yeah, we really got along. Like, we were in this basketball team together. It was like a communal. All Japanese-American kids at that time were in basketball leagues, yeah. whether you were good or not. It was just the thing you do. Do you want friends or not? This you is your good? community. I was not good. But I was, <laughs> but I had heart. Mm, and that's huge. That's uh-huh. half the battle. If you're a kid <laughs> in sports, half the battle is having heart. A hundred percent. And we all knew if we stuck to it, there was a scholarship you could win. Mm. Of like two thousand uh, dollars for having stayed at least like four years or something. Great. So we were all trying to get that. You yeah, know? ball is life. Mm-hmm. Ball is life. Is that what is that from Basketball Diary? Something like oh, that. Okay, that, I have that no idea. What movie? is Ball is Life from? I just can can we fact check that? Oh, I think it was Space Jam. <laughs> is it from? No. Is it? What is it from? What is Ball is Life from? It is a movie. From. I don't we don't know. Come, come back to Tevi, me. Tevi's going to find the out where dance. Ball is Life is from. <laughs> exactly. Michael Jordan said it. Oh, the last dance. Yeah, <laughs> him. <laughs> oh, I think it was Bugs Bunny. And <laughs> yeah, it was Bugs Bunny in that iconic scene in the original Space Jam. Um, okay, so all of your friends bailed on you. And yeah. you then were the only person that went to Venice High. You're so nice. All of, all of my two friends bailed on me, yeah. Two is a lot. Two is a crew. I think so, too. I feel like most people don't have, like, more than, I don't know, handfuls of friends that you usually call, if you, even as an adult. If you are one of those people that has, like, 30 best friends, yeah. there's something wrong with you. Yeah. How do you have the your memory? My God. Yeah. I don't. You can't remember any factoids about your friends. How can life. you get work done? Because you have to 
catch manage. up with all, I know. manage so many personalities, yeah. all of their calendars, you yeah. know, and issues. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, two friends. I was like, that's my gonna be my crew going into a freshman year. It's so daunting. I'm not even supposed to be here. Is it a big school? school? It's pretty big, yeah. They got bungalows and they've got a pool. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like these. This is all a lot of high schools, right? They have uh, bungalows and a pool at Venice High, like an outdoor. I guess it's Southern California. Yeah, there was and, like, a, a pool swim for, like, team. Swim team, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the swim team were like the jocks in yeah. a weird way. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Really, I think so. I just was like, you know, it's football. Right. Like, I'm so basic. I was like, this is what I saw in movies. I always think that like sports where the jocks are, are like indicative, or I guess the jocks are chosen based on the location of the school. So like mm, in Southern Venice. California, yeah. Venice, like it would make sense to me that like swimmers, like mm-hmm. where I grew up in DC, it was a lot of like lacrosse culture. Got you. And yes. I feel like the Midwest is more right. like football and the South is football. It's where the money is. Yeah. Whichever sport they put money exactly. into, right? That's exactly Lacrosse, right. yeah. Lacrosse, or I feel like if you're in San Diego, like baseball is really big mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. It yeah. is where they dump the money into. That's what it is. Hockey is big in the Northeast. Right. Why would it suddenly be American football? Yeah, that's just somebody one time. Maybe it's like a middle America thing with mm-hmm. football. And so, yeah, for us, it was the swim team. That's where the money went. They they were the ones that had this hippy-dippy camp that you can apply to go to every year. That was mostly the swim team running it. That's, Everyone what was wanted the camp? to go. I got to go one time. It was Oak Grove. So you can apply if you don't have, you know, if, you, if you're if you low income uh, like I was, you can, you know, like – I think it was like a lottery system and then boom, you get to go to this camp, which is like over a weekend. And it's mostly so that people can like go and make out and stuff. Love that. But also talk feelings. And I'd never seen, you know, people in high school talk feelings like this before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, where people were crying and hugging and then having sex, you know, because they were crying. Yeah, that (laughs) makes sense. Yeah, and I was like, whoa, I didn't... Did you have sex on this trip? No, I was such a square. I was, you know, like a, you know, in the ninth grade, I was doing like, see you at the pole. I was like a... What's see you at the pole? It's a... I was a Jesus girl. Oh. So... Annually, I think at the beginning of every school semester, you know, the Christians or the people in Christian club <clears throat> would gather at the flagpole and hold hands, make a scene out of it. It's very dramatic. And then you pray for, I think, the world. So, yeah. So you I was doing for stuff the like that. Yeah. You were praying for the world. You weren't praying for, like, the sinners <laughs> at school. You were playing, praying for, like, the world at large, which I like. Right. Just, like. Africa, you right. know, that Just like thing. wanting world peace mm-hmm. and believing. So you were religious. Yeah, I was religious the first year, yeah. And, and then what happened? And then like I I probably Oak Grove had a little bit to do with it because I went ninth grade to Oak Grove. And then you were like, oh, I don't, I don't believe in this anymore. Yeah, I was like, well, it's so many feelings. What's this feeling inside? Are these lyrics to something? <laughs> I feel like I feel like I'm being. You're quoting Little like Mermaid. John Mayer now. John Mayer. Does he? I didn't know he had such deep lyrics. I, I mean, was sure this I'm, was I'm, Ariel. I'm giving him too much credit. Your lyrics yeah. are way better. What is this feeling? Something I, inside. I think that you're thinking Isn't of. That look at this stuff. Right. Isn't, Isn't it neat? Yeah. Wouldn't you think my, my collection's, collection's complete? complete? Yeah. Yeah. I think that you're. What is this feeling? This feeling inside. I'm <laughs> just same <laughs> same I'm tune. Discovering at Oak Grove, I'm alive. That's right. That's right. Once a young Christian girl boom, now doesn't boom, believe boom, in boom, anything. Boom, 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 That's boom. beautiful. Yeah. Okay, so you went there and then you had like a spiritual awakening and you were like, I don't know if I believe in all of this stuff anymore and I'm not a part of the Christian like yeah. cult at my high school. I was like, I don't think I could be the person judging when right. I was like connecting to what people were opening up about. Mm. You know, my parents' divorce actually did affect me. Mm. You know, uh, things like this that I was like, oh, okay. And then there was no talk of like God. Mm. It was just feelings and then 
peers, your people, fellow teenagers having each other's back. That's just so nice. out of having each other's back, not being like, you know, you need to turn to God. Okay, let's pray about it. Right. No, I hadn't seen something like that. And I was like, yeah, like, I don't want to live a life where I'm like, no, that is impure that you're having sex. It's like these people were happy. And yeah, maybe that actually I'm realizing for the first time right now on this couch. Wow. While I'm wearing all black. Yeah, there you go. And you were all white. Yeah, I think it was maybe... Around that time that I was like, and then I stopped going to Christian club. There were other things happening too. Um, I had, <clears throat> sorry, I was going on like a Christian therapist at mm -hmm. that time for eating disorder mm -hmm. stuff. And I was getting a little frustrated about it too because like, so I had anorexia and then bulimia, and I was going through bulimia at that time a mm -hmm. little bit uh, to sort of binge eating, and I wanted to know how to, like, stop it. Mm -hmm. And But the Christian therapist was always like, okay, uh, let's turn to, you know, Psalms, blah, 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 right? Right, and it's like, no, this isn't tangibly solving the issue that I'm concerned about. Yeah, I right. needed, like, maybe cognitive behavioral. Right. I needed, yeah, not to just like read passages and pray about it. So I yeah. think all of that together, I yeah. was like, yeah, maybe. It's amazing that at such a young age when you were dealing with an eating disorder as a freshman in high school, you had the emotional intelligence and general intelligence to be like, I want to get better this this kind of help like isn't working for me and this sort of guidance isn't speaking to me anymore. I feel like mm. so many people don't have that at that age. Yeah, I, it wasn't as articulate back in the day. Right. I just stopped going. Right. I was like, I don't want to go. But I didn't know why. Mm. Now I know. Yeah. It's because, oh, it wasn't helping. Right. And it was a lot of money. Totally. You know? Did your yeah. parent did your mom send you to a Christian therapist? My uncle who we were so we were living in my uncle's garage at that time my uncle was my guardian and when you move to a new country, you know, yeah, that's how they get you, right? Just right. oh yeah, come to the church that I go to, you know. Right. You need friends. <laughs> I'm how like, old yeah, were you I when need... you moved here? So I was doing all these things that were my interests because I needed friends, right? Like basketball. Yeah, I'm a I was a forward. Yeah, I barely knew you what that been meant. A point guard. Is that the person that passes the ball? That's the person that <laughs> the I'm, main I'm, person. I'm pretty right? sure that the person, the person that's the point guard, yeah, like passes the ball is usually smaller and it's like pretty fast. Oh yeah. Well, I was five three. I'm five three now. I was five three back then. Yeah. I was five three since. I guess fifth that's grade. actually tall in the sixth. So grade. they thought I was so tall. Yeah. They're like, oh, she'll be a good forward, right. just because of my looks. Right. Okay, no, just cause not because of, of your skill. <laughs> yeah, and do you know how much pressure it is to be like, oh, she's gonna make, she's gonna make the shot. Yeah, she's five three, and then you flop it, and then you <laughs> don't make the shot. It's mortifying. Yeah, just because I'm taller and closer to the thing, I'm like, you know, it's just so much. Doesn't mean you got hand eye, hun. No, no, not at all, or the interest. No, you need the interest. Yeah, and so. How old were you when you moved here? I was ten when I moved here. And yeah, so there was, yeah. And so m my uncle sort of like showed us the ropes. Mm -hmm. He's like, you know, whoever you move in with, you start picking up their lifestyle. Right. Right. Well, you're going to live here. On Sundays, we go here. Right. Like have you, you heard have of to him? adapt God? to my life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I'm your ride places too. Right. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. we don't drive. I'm 10. Right. Yeah. And so he, we eat this. On Saturdays, we like to go here. Right. Sundays, that's the church. That's the Lord's day. Of day. the Lord, yeah. Mm -hmm. You want friends? Yes. I, again, I go to of church. Of course, I want friends. <laughs> yeah. And so that's how I became religious. And then my uncle is the one that gave me the therapist as a recommendation. Yeah. Well, He's, that seems like a well intentioned for sure. gesture. Yeah. Just not the therapy wasn't executed to help. Yeah, yeah. Perhaps. Yeah, where I was like, oh, it just feels like another session, like a, another Sunday worship session. Right. Yeah. Where I'm like, but I, how do I stop binging? Right. Yeah, you're like, but we're not talking about my problem. <laughs> right. They're like, on the seventh day. I was like, what? Yeah, no. Yeah. That's not it. Uh-huh. So when you were, 
in high school generally, were you a good student? I was at the beginning. I was better. I, and when I say beginning, probably like first semester. Mm. Because, <laughs> man, <laughs> you got motivation, right? Right. When you Something first show up somewhere. Yeah. 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 I was like, oh, I have no friends here. Yeah. They didn't come here. Right. They didn't choose Venice High School. Nope. You, me. Yeah. You know, and... Call him out. Who's the other person? Drag him. <laughs> you, you, yeah, see, that's that's what happens. We forget you <laughs> when you leave us in the dust. Yeah, and so I was like, oh, I'll do really well. You know, I'll pay attention in class. And then it dwindled because, you know, when you have an eating disorder, things are foggy. You don't have energy. You're so focused on the food aspect and your body aspect and you're feeling shame and all these things. You're not sleeping well because you have digestion digestion problems mm -hmm. and so then my grades started going bad yeah mm -hmm. and then were you doing like extracurriculars were you performing at all or would like did your do you feel that your eating disorder kind of like took hold of your life at the time yeah it took hold but then I always did really love performing mm -hmm. and so I saw the tryouts for cheerleading happening, and I was like, I like dancing. That's so I like fun. Ying Yang Twins. I love <laughs> Missy Elliott. Yeah. You know, my grandma had always enrolled me in dance uh -huh. uh, as a kid. It was like ballet and stuff. Not so much hip hop, but, um, you know, I, I was like, I love dance. I knew some gymnastics. Yeah. So I just tried out for it. And, and did you make it? I made it in varsity. Oh, my God. As a freshman. Oh, my God. Yeah, boom. First try. Did you wear those, like, hot outfits? <laughs> That's like, I always, we didn't oh, have cheerleading at my I school. Just, <laughs> you didn't have cheerleading. No. But you had lacrosse. Yeah, but no cheerleaders. We didn't have you football. You had lacrosse and, and retirement plans. Yeah, that's, that's what it. your school was. <laughs> we did not have, all that I wanted was to be a little bitch in that cheerleading oh, outfit. So I mean, where, that's not true. Where did you be, what, where did you belong what was your I was like you know I would say I was uh I was probably like a floater son so <laughs> like I floated around yeah um brooding artist moon cool cool okay with like stoner rising uh-huh uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> I think that's probably an apt description of myself. That's I, cool. I see it. I see it, yeah. But I rooting artist is, was the true self, yeah? Yeah, then well, I projected a lot of confidence mm -hmm. whilst quietly struggling. Mm -hmm. And I never really felt fully... And I, it's something I still struggle with to this day. Feeling misunderstood. Oh, sure. Yeah. Did you ever take that? You know that, um, what is that? The personality is like, you're one through yeah. nine. Oh. Are you a four? Enneagram. Yeah, an Enneagram. Enneagram. Have you done that? I think I have, and I think I might be. I think you might be a four, because I'm a four. Yeah. Where you kind of feel a little misunderstood, but you really yeah. like, um, yeah. I'm like extremely... Uh, it's four is called the artist, I think. There you go. Yeah, I'm an artist, a misunderstood, empathetic oh, diva. Only if they looked. Only if they looked my way deeper. Does anybody see me? Oh, yeah. Vulture, <laughs> <laughs> vulture, I'm a vulture. No. Drag them. <laughs> um, but I don't know. Yeah, I always wanted to be a cheerleader because I always wanted that outfit. Yeah, I didn't even, it's not like I looked up to cheerleaders growing up or anything. I just was like, oh, it combines sort Things of all like. my interests. So did you cheerlead all throughout high school? Yeah, so we started training summer of freshman year mm -hmm. for me. And then sophomore, junior, senior, I was a cheerleader. Did you fly in the sky? Oh, I was the person catching. Okay, so you mm -hmm. were a base. You weren't a flyer. I was, yeah, I was a base. Stand of the terminology. You do. You I know. watched Cheer. Yes, Cheer <laughs> is such a good docuseries. I so, love it. Oh, so the people on that, mm -hmm. we, we were a very different squad than right. the people on Cheer or But you still had people flying in the sky. Yeah, we still, you know, threw them up and caught them. But they yeah. weren't doing like wild flips. Right, they weren't we doing like... Have, <sighs> we didn't have the resources mm. or the talent honestly not our squad i love them i love them to death they were the first 
friends that really took me in at Venice High School. That's so nice. Yeah, and it was like, but uh, we were definitely like rough around the edges, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, the girls on my cheer squad were more like, if it weren't for cheer, I would have joined a gang. Like that kind mm. of, that that was the, my friends. Right. And it was cool because they were also like, took it so seriously. They were like, Coco, they called me Coco. Coco, you need to have good grades to stay on. Okay, mm -hmm. you need to be at practice from, you know, if school ends at 3, 4 p.m. to 6. Every day we're practicing it. Go home, do your homework. Do well. Sleep well because the next day we're, you know, prepping for pep rally, blah, blah, blah. It sounds really positive. It was positive. I needed that. And then my eating disorder started getting better. That's great. Yeah. It's a miracle that the – cheer because I think that – I would assume something like cheerleading might make an eating disorder worse. Yeah. But but then again, when you're required to perform and be athletic and move your body and do all these things, you need sustenance. Yeah. You need muscle. You need yeah. strength. Yeah. And structure. Yeah. Structure. Every day there was the same schedule, routine. And these girls relied on me, you know, and I relied on them. So I couldn't just like stop I, c I couldn't just start falling apart, mm -hmm. you know? I was like, no, there was suddenly a community that I cared about, yeah. you know, that needed me. So the literal squad. I think squad. that's what it was, yeah. The cheer squad. This actual, yes. Are you still friends with goals. them to this day? Um, They, I think, you know, I, <laughs> what if I was like, well, I live in the east side now. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, and there's still, you know, you know in West that LA. Freeway. Yeah, there's that commute. <laughs> um. You know, we actually sort of like fell a, a little out of touch. So that's on, normal. Yeah, online, online we keep up, but yeah, I always talk about them. They were the first people to really take me in. That's yeah. so nice. Yeah. So then it was cheer and it was school. And did you perform in the plays or anything like that? So senior year, I was like, well, maybe I need to tap into if I am a four on the Enneagram. I don't really know. Right. Um, tap into this brooding artist mm -hmm. as well. So I joined theater. And? A little too late. I was like, oh, I wish I had more than just one semester right. of theater. This is my last semester at this school. Um, yeah, and I joined. They were doing cabaret. Love it. I got in. Cabaret. Yeah. Da, 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 da. How does that song go, the cabaret song? Uh <laughs> it's the what cabaret. Good, wait, it, what good is sitting yeah. alone in your room? Yes. Right? Come hear the, the music, music play. play. Yeah. yeah. Life is a cabaret. Beret. So I'm not a pretty singer. <laughs> Hire us in your music. Uh, that was really hard. <laughs> no, you're a great singer. I do love to sing. You're a good singer. So I got nervous. Obviously, I didn't get Sally Bowles, the main part. We all wanted to be. I was like, well. You also, know. you get to wear, like, slutty outfits in cabaret. Yes, you do. So that was exciting. Yeah. Where I was like, oh, my outfits keep getting shorter and shorter. Yeah. From I'm cheer to, to cabaret. Underwear. Yeah, just to underwear and fishnet stockings. So We were 18. Hot. You I know? love it. <laughs> what? Wait. No, wait. Finish your thought, and then I have a thought that I'm dying to ask you, actually. No, no. I don't have a thought after fishnets. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask, because you have... Such a signature look. Oh, right. Now. Yeah. And this is very Sally Bowles. Yes. This is, uh, what, gosh, what's her name? Liza Minnelli. This is Liza Minnelli. Yes. But no. It is. Yeah. But if, I, if it were, if you, you need to like, I feel like she has the little, yes, like the a little, little sideburn. Sideburn. Yeah. Yes, of course. But you know, you had to have the talent too. Anyway, yeah, you can't, you can't just have the sideburn. I was chorus. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, what good is sitting? You know, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm the kind of voice whenever there's like a musical sing-along, uh -huh. I'm the person that always gets stuck with the part that's like, watch him run amok, like if there's a lame is situation. Yeah. You know that part? Watch him run a fall. Yeah, ba da ba da ba da da fee far out. That's the part. They're always like, Asuka, you do that part. Like like the, the little like interstitial, like the little I the person get... that like pops up and I was like, the, we are so sad sitting yeah, in the house like yes. that person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like the the the, the villain part that's like that talk sings. It would be like um, an Annie 
Yes, like, yes. Santa I'm, Claus, he never see. You'd pop out and you'd be like, Santa Claus, who's that? What's he? That's like, that's me. who you'd be. Yes, yeah. that's me. And so those were the parts I was doing. <laughs> the, and, the annoyed, mm. disgruntled girl that right, would right. chime in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> come on, right? Yeah, like that. And then they'd be like, shut up, shut up. And then the main girl would be like, mm, come on, right? I know, they're always pissed at that person. They are. And what, you know... Whoever writes musicals, they're mm-hmm. like, something's missing from this song. Yeah. They're like, oh, an annoying person that we all tell to shut the fuck up in the yeah. middle of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we hate that person, yeah. Yeah, it's like. Why do we hate her? Yeah. I don't Oh, she's 40. Or like, in a, and like half of these, like, she, is, she has tuberculosis. <laughs> no, like, it's true. It is true. It's true, yeah. So that's, yeah. So wait, you had this look in high school. You had this haircut in high I school. I didn't yet. You didn't yet. I didn't yet. And so, but in my head, you know, but looking back, I was going to have this haircut. You always knew it. I was going to. So, you know, in my head, I was like, one day I'll have this when I was auditioning. Right. Or else I had just regular straight hair. How long was your hair? It was long enough to do uh, dreads. <laughs> Not dreads. Wait, you had no, dreads? No. What's that thing? Um, gosh. Like uh, twists? Is it? So, oh, uh, cornrows. The you girls on the cheer squad gave me cornrows. So long enough to do that. And it was like, even after cornrows, it was down to like my nipples. Wow. Yeah. Wait a second. Mm-hmm. How long did you have? How often did you have cornrows? We, for like homecoming and stuff. Like special events. Yeah, because the girls on the squad would do it. And then I didn't, none of us knew at that time that maybe I shouldn't rock it. But I bet it looked great on you. I liked it. Yeah. I liked the how tight it was on around my head mm-hmm. you know i liked like w- we were all in uniform yeah you know yeah but when i look back at pictures i am like yeah that's pretty wild <laughs> 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 i look like yeah i look like the white girl in hustle and flow you know <laughs> taryn manning <laughs> yes i love her she's great she you would know, get the side parts here for a pimp. Uh-huh. isn't she the one that sings that no taraji p henson sings yeah that. she doesn't get to sing i don't think she gets to sing I don't at think all she, i don't think she does no, either no she's yeah she probably tried and they probably told her to shut the fuck up yeah 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 they're like you're that person <laughs> or you know just how about just like meth head you play meth head all the time she really did get typecast as that for for a sec orange years. is new black yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. It was like, oh, that's the scary bitch. <laughs> you know? And she's like this gorgeous woman. But what? she's like, oh, eat you. Like cannibal almost, right? <laughs> she, they always made her play like a meth head. Like, she's got to eat you. Like, literally, probably put your flesh in her mouth. If she didn't have such meth head teeth, you know, oh she would be able to chew through your fucking skin because she's crazy. <laughs> That's the part. I hope she gets to play like, I don't know, uh, other things now. Yeah, don't, don't worry. She uh, she did get to play the, the, what is it, titular? Is that what that word is called? Role of Karen <laughs> in a movie about a oh, Karen. Oh, Karen. That was her? Yep. There you go. That's not what I meant. <laughs> that's not what I meant nobody meant that nobody said that was also wild mm. nobody said do it I know this idea it's really crazy <laughs> it's not what we meant it was, speaking of drugs mm-hmm. did you drink or smoke at all in high school um, starting like uh, junior year yeah. because of a boyfriend yeah what was the drink of choice and who was the boyfriend so he was he went to a different high school how'd you meet because I like making things difficult we met through so on Saturdays I would go to Japanese school okay because more opportunity to make more friends yes uh, so Saturdays we would go try to keep up with our language okay. culture you know how long was it like a full day of school no just like nine to noon okay and but you would get homework there too. So that was a different set of people, you know, people from the Valley, mm. Santa Clarita, all kinds of places. So you were really kind of expanding your network a little more. So there was a friend there and it was um, it was a friend of his that mm. I met. Um, and yeah, and so... Were, was everyone in your Japanese school Japanese or were there people that were attending the school that weren't Japanese? Just yeah, there were people who were just interested. And like learning the language mm-hmm. and the culture and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds like fun, yeah. I say. 
Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, I mean, our school was a little rickety. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like the best one. There was a better one, but I couldn't go to that one. And because you needed a social security number, I didn't have one until I was like seventeen. And so, so how did you go to high school? High school, like Do you need public? a social security number to go to high school. You, you don't. don't. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I know. Pretty I rad. Like that. You could do a lot of things as an undocumented person. Um, you really could. I mean, I think it's Strangely. great that you can go to high school without a social security number. Yeah. It's college that it gets tricky. Right. So I was like, oh, I hope I get it before college time. Mm-hmm. And then also driver's license, you need oh, a social security right, number. Right. So that was also like a thing. I, I got lucky I got a green card by 17. Right. Yeah. So then you're able to get your license. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, boom, I was driving to Santa Clarita to see this new boyfriend all and the wait, time. And wait, who was this boyfriend? So he, yeah, he was just like kind of broody, mm-hmm. brooding Was artist. he your age? Brooding, one year older. Okay. Oh. Mm. That, I mean, that oh, is an very older sexy. Man. That was is an older, older man. man. Yeah, so junior. 17, 18. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, oh, he's a senior. Mm-hmm. And he's on a senior citizen, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Barely legal. Yeah. So yeah, and I was, and he was a football player at his high school. Whoa. All of it felt wrong, you know. Oh, but I'm a cheerleader for another football team. Yeah. You know, You're betraying your football team. Mm-hmm. Would yeah. he play against your high school? No, no, too far. How far away was he? He so so Santa Clarita is far. Santa Clarita is far. Santa Clarita is so far that. Um, you know, in all of LA, like like they're they're conservative, for example. They're right. pretty they lean pretty conservative. Right. You know, they're just like a thirty minute drive away from I think LA proper, but yeah. Wow, yeah, so it's you like were a in different a long distance world. relationship with this man. Yeah. I kinda was, yeah. And how long thirty were you minute guys together? Forty five minute drive. <laughs> that's long. In high school, that's a long ways away. I know. When you got homework and I got Japanese school on Saturday. Yeah, you have stuff to do. The squad needs me. Yeah, the squad needs you. Yeah. You gotta be in cabaret. Mm-hmm. Come on. That's why I was doing poorly in grades, though, mm. because I was always like trying to see if I could go see him. And then sometimes I would ditch. I started ditching. Mm. And yeah, so then I really started failing. Were you guys having sex? Mm hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that was yeah, that was my first. Your first time. Yeah, first, first person. love. First love. Yeah. Were you in love in high school? Yeah, I think I th- I thought I was. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm like, I don't know what that was. Do you know? Do you know? You you look back, you go, oh, that was love. That was not love. Can you do that? Because I can't. Yes. <laughs> well, I think I definitely thought I was in love with, like, my middle school boyfriends. I definitely thought I was in love, but yeah. it, I wasn't in love. Right, because now that, like, we're married, right? Yeah. So it's like, oh, it's different. Yeah, but, like, the I, I always find that the love that I experienced in high school, mm-hmm. but I was in love with two boys in high school. Yeah. And those loves, like, weren't sustainable loves. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I felt like they were so charged by, like, teenage hormones and desire and, like, longing mm-hmm. and, like, feeling tortured that like that's not like how the love I have now feels like the love I have now feels like easy and warm and like fully supported like I think in high school I was always like let me prove to you how (laughs) much I love you like can't you see you know like right yeah I'm in pain it hurts yeah this is why it's love Mm mm-hmm and so it could have been love. It's just not sustainable. That's a good point. Yeah, it's like like it's, it's not practical. No. It could kill you if yes. you kept loving that way. Yes, I, I yeah. mean I was truly love sick. Like love made me ill when I was yeah. in high school. Right, right. Yeah, I think I was like that too with the oh. the high school boyfriend, and yeah. that's why I'm scared to say it was love because I was like I don't want anyone to love that way. No, it's so dramatic. Where you're crying, you're driving drunk yeah. Yeah. on the freeway to go see him. No, yeah. I'm coming to see you right now. Yeah, you know it's like <laughs> 3 p.m. I know. Yeah, I one time like got into some kind of argument with my boyfriend, and I was like, I'm leaving. Like I was at a party, and he was being a dick or something, and I left, and I got into the car, and I called my 
my babysitter from uh-huh. growing up. And she lived two and a half hours away. And oh. I was like, I'm coming to your house. And she was like, okay. She's like my other mom. Yeah. Sister. I like get in the car. I get on the beltway. Not but 10 minutes out of D.C. I run into someone's, uh, <laughs> the back of someone's car. Oh. And I called my mom and I was like, I got into a fight with my boyfriend. And I got into a car crash and I'm on the beltway. And she's like, why are you on the fucking highway? (laughs) And I was like, because I was going to Melanie's house. And she was like, in Pennsylvania? Oh, my God. I was like, yes, because I was just that hysterical. Crazy. Yeah, you're just like, no, this makes sense. I've got to be in another state. Well, I was like, I want to prove a point. Mm -hmm. I think that's also like youth love is like. Yeah. I will bleed for you. Right. I know. And then the wild things, because we have so much more energy too. Yeah. Oh, you can, You will do the two and a half hour drive. Oh, absolutely. I know you will. Yeah. Even if it's like, oh, you know, you get there at three in the morning. Yeah. And then you know you're right. But it's you're romantic. Right. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Disgusting. <laughs> I look back at little me and I'm like, girl, don't do that. That's, I know. I, I, later on, I'm going to ask you what advice you could give your high school self. But for me, I'd say... Dump all of them. Don't do that. Mm. I would say it's embarrassing. Mm. You, you look desperate and you'll regret it. <laughs> and it's not cute. But nobody saw it. No. Only you were there for oh. most of these moments. Hang like. out with your friends. Go go and get high with your friends. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's cool. I, yeah. I wish. I wish too. <laughs> I was like, who were my friends? I made my boyfriend my only friend for uh, that's what you gotta the do. last two years. Yeah. And that's maybe why I don't talk to the cheerleaders anymore. You, you know? fell out with your squad. You became addicted. And I was like, no, to Brandon, only dick. Brandon. Yeah, yeah, if like a basic bitch. And then what happened? So easy. And then and then I like and then we broke up because I I was changing. Oh, I uh, the next relationship is toxic too. But I immediately sort of went into another relationship. Classic. With an older man this time, like, like an actual older? older, yeah, like twelve years older oh, when wow. I was nineteen. Yeah. How'd you meet him? He was my teacher at community college, oh. so that was yeah, that was a different complicated, toxic for sure. Oh yeah, control issues he had, <clears throat> power imbalance for sure. Yeah, you know, um, and yeah, so I think. That's why I didn't have friends that I could just get high with I because know. I was like, no, I'm in my in love phase now. Yeah. I just do boys. I just do yeah. boys. And on that note, we're going to go to a quick break. And we are right back. <sighs> mm. Boys. Sometimes a girl just needs one. Get nasty. Remember that song? Yes. Um, and when uh-huh. see you have a good voice. No, I, I I'm not like off. Tea. And when a girl is with one. Oh, Brittany. Cause she's in control. Yes. Yeah. Um, is there a story or a moment from high school that you look back and you're like, that is me in a nutshell? That is my high school experience. Mm. Is there one tale that just kind of encapsulates Otsko in high school? In high school, yeah. Yeah, yeah thank God, in high school. Yeah. I don't want any of that being me now. No, of course not. Are you okay, kidding? I don't know. Some people are like, I knew when I was six, I will be a comedian. You know, I'm like... I thought How? there were no like some and you know what some, some people, people did some people yeah. really did I think everyone has different iterations of their everyone goes through a different journey I know it has different iterations of dreams and hopes and whatever yeah some people really knew themselves from early on yeah and so ooh um well one time so this was I think still like freshman year or I was getting out of Christianity. I don't yeah. know. Is that leaving, a, leaving Christ. I was leaving Christ, and I was like horny, and I had gone to Oak Grove. I had seen people making out and stuff, and having sex, and telling us. You about saw it. people have sex? No, but you know. Like, oh yeah, they'll like, be like, like they'll be like so and so and so and so are in the bushes right. right now, so don't go over there. And I, <laughs> and I'd be giggling. Oh my gosh, that's so exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, and so after Oak Grove, there was homecoming Mm -hmm. and there was this guy that i kept dancing with at homecoming Mm -hmm. 
And in my head, I was like, we had a connection. Mm -hmm. We had a thing. He wants to make out. And so the next, after homecoming, when I saw him in the hallway, mm -hmm. I, I just grabbed him and like put my tongue in his mouth. Like I like made out with him. I love that. But like, that's kind of me too -y. He, <laughs> So he, right, cause, and he, well, right. Yes, I would love it too. But he so like did it. He was, he went, whoa, and he pushed me away. And he just oh. went, girl, you scary. And that, I'd never been told that before. And then he ran away. And so I feel like that encapsulates maybe me in high school a little bit. <laughs> if it makes sense at all. Yeah, well, I think mm -hmm. that, like, you were feeling bold. Yeah, where it's like, I'm, yeah, I want to be bold. And then you got, like, really shut down. And then mm -hmm. that's kind of a blow to your self-esteem, especially when you're, like, you know, leaving Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Finding out who you are. Yeah. And how to read people. And how people perceive you. Right. Yeah. And reading people. And reading if people. If someone's not into you. And asking, consent, yeah. all these things. As we started as we started off the episode, even the Ying Yang <laughs> twins ask for That's consent. That's right. They do. What was the lyric? It's it's mind if I touch it, let me see if it's soft. Mm -hmm. No, nah, I'm just playing unless you say I can. Yeah. That's consent. That's, That's asking consent. For consent. Okay, if I know anything. <sighs> you about know, that. we all make mistakes. We do. Yeah. Foolish, horny mistakes. I think that people still to this day don't fully grasp how horny teen girls are. Yeah. Yeah. We see teen boys jacking off all the time. We do. But girls, it's because we're, we're like embarrassed too, right? Because everyone's like, be embarrassed. Yeah. It's Meanwhile, cute. I was fucking my tub for years. Yeah, your for tub. Years, my tub with like water, yes. water or like no, no. I was fully metal, no. metal too. I don't know. People get wild. People, you have and again, we have energy and healing, healing yes. properties. Like we heal faster when we were back then too. I know. That's why we could have bleeding hearts for these boys yeah. that destroyed us and bounce back faster. Oh, for sure. I'd be like, what? Oh, yeah. Two hours of sleep. No big deal. Yeah. What were you doing? Crying all night exactly. over Brandon? Uh-huh. Over Brandon. Yeah. What a name. I, I have a Brandon in my life who I love. Yeah. I have yeah. two Brandons in my life who I love. It's a good Such name. Such a name of a time, you know? It is. Like how my name is very like 1930s. <laughs> Brandon is very like child born in mid 80s early 90s wow yeah I feel like it was popular then who do we think like Brandon you know celebrity wise there was Brendan that... Fraser. yeah but that's yeah that's a Brendan that's a Brendan not a Brandon my Brandon my ex uh, loved Brandon Lee that's mm. Bruce Lee's son yes who was in still, the crow? Uh, yeah, and is, are, aren't they still acting? Uh, or did they die died on set That's of the crow? Right. But I feel like that was such a movie for, at, at, around that time. No, everyone loved it. It was like yeah, moody, you know, dark. Wait, I forgot that he died on set. He was young. Yeah, yeah, he was young. Yeah, wasn't he like in his early, like late twenties? I think so. Am I making this up? No, and this just the stunt went wrong. It was like there were bullets in the actual gun or something. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. And then yeah. all of this came out with that other oh terrible. Yeah. But that's the Brandon I think of. Oh I don't God. know. I don't, I don't know if there were other Brandons. But yeah, I was meeting a lot of Brandons during that time too. Yeah. His best friend's name was Brandon too. So I was like, Oh, Brandons. Really? The Brandons? Yeah, yeah. That's so funny. Yeah. Knock, knock, knock. Is that the door knock to the high school guidance counselor's office? Why, yes, it is. And I'm your high school guidance counselor. Hi. In this section of the show, you get to rectify any high school trauma that lingers inside of you to this day, whether that's apologizing for someone, or mm. no, for something, or saying fuck you to someone. You can do it this time what you will. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Giving you this huge, important platform. To clear I your conscience. I feel like you already got that out of me. I Like, all you did was 
switch voices just now, but you've sort of been my counselor this whole time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't you think? Yeah. You've been getting so much Unlicensed, out of me. Unlicensed, but yeah. I don't care. <laughs> the most, I don't. One could one I, could debate whether or not your Christian counselor was licensed. Oh, yeah. I don't I don't know what. <laughs> she, she just had to put her hand on the Bible. And there you swear go. Swear to God. There you go. <laughs> swear to God, I psychology. I will... That's it. <laughs> That's it. Um, I think I should apologize to Marcus, who mm. I saw in the hallway. Yeah. You know, and grabbed him and put my tongue down his mouth. Yeah. That's not cool. No. <laughs> I would. That's cancelable behavior. But you know. You're coming forward. You're acknowledging mm-hmm. your mistake. You're apologizing for it. You're taking ownership. Yeah. You're not blaming anyone else but yourself. Uh huh. Yeah. It was. It was all me. Yeah. I wasn't. I was moved by mm-hmm. feelings, but that was all me still. Yeah. Yeah. And I've never been called scary. No. Nope. <laughs> Girl, you're scary. And, and that ran. stuck with you. That stuck with me. I was Haunted like, you, one I was like, might I say. Am? No one no one ever looks at me and goes, ah, you Scary, know. Scary, I mean? yeah. But that's what I did to him. Wow. You scared him. Yeah. And he was like six feet tall. <laughs> and I, I just jumped and rah, ravaged his face. Yeah. Look, mm-hmm. oh. your apology is heard here, and your apology Thank is heard you. by Marcus. Thank you. And I think that, you know, it's beautiful to acknowledge our mistakes. Yeah, yeah, and just, and not repeat it. And not repeat it. And we won't be repeating it in the future. No. No. <laughs> no, that would be wild. Very bad. <laughs> um, I don't know if we have a Classmates Corner today. We do? Oh, my goodness. In this section of the show, Tevi will read us a email from a listener of something they want to tell to the high school guidance counselor and my beautiful guest. And please, please, please write to us at SeniorSuperlativesPod at gmail.com with the subject line Classmates Corner because we really love hearing from you, number one. And number two, I really like knowing uh, the traumas that we can heal on this show. Mm -hmm. So, Tevi, please take it away. Yes, this is from Marla. She says, like the classmate on a previous episode, I too would like to give a big fuck you to the New Jersey public school system, especially one Coach B. Sophomore year, which was 2006, we had to take a gym slash health hybrid class that was supposed to be about nutrition or something. It was riddled with fat phobic messaging. One time Coach B, whose only professional titles were PE instructor and football coach, not a medical professional, took it upon himself to march us down to the weight room, line us up, and take our BMIs one by one out in the open for the rest of the class to see. I was a size 6 and always told by my doctors that I was healthy. Coach B, however, told me that my BMI was a little high and that I needed to lose weight. I don't think he said this particularly loud, but it wasn't whispered. I even remember overhearing the girl before me being deemed overweight as well. I already had body image issues, and they got increasingly intense as high school went on. Obviously, this incident wasn't the sole reason for that. We all remember the 2000s media, but it certainly didn't help. He totally thought this whole charade was in our best interest, as if he was being valiant and by telling us the hard truths about our fucking BMIs. This fed into the notion that fat equals wrong and amoral. I don't think anyone saw it as wrong, but I can only imagine it was damaging to plenty of others. It, on- it It's only in retrospect that I'm like, what the fuck? Anyway, obsessed with your pod. I was also class of 2008, a bad student in a high-performing lacrosse-obsessed world. Thanks for what you do. Love, Marla. Aww. That is really <clears throat> fucked up. You know I talk about this all the time. Some teachers, you can get a teacher that is a fucking cruel loser Mm -hmm. that wants to troll you and embarrass you in front of your class. And yeah, fuck that fake coach doctor. Yeah. Also, the school system needs to figure that out because a football coach teaching nutrition stuff, like that's, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like so inexperienced, toxic. You know, and also, it, it will scar people. And, you know, we spoke about it earlier in the pod, but like eating disorders too, especially, I think, I hope, I pray to God it's gotten better. Mm-hmm. But like, not just with young girls, but with 
teenagers at large. Like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you really need to handle that shit with care. Yeah. Because you don't know what's going on with people. I know. It's so wild. But then, you know, sometimes, like, sometimes I'll look back and be like, my elementary school teachers were... 25 years old. I know. Like, what? They didn't know shit. I had a science teacher that was 22 when I was in middle school. Yeah, come on. And so what? These people are going to, oh, 27-year-old or 28-year-old is going to tell me about nutrition? That is scary. Yeah. Tell me how, you know, be able to handle, you know, talking about things in a sensitive way. No. I. That's, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's pretty wild. I got my period in that science class, and I remember I, I thought I shit my pants, and I came back to the class, and he was like, just go. <laughs> and in my head, I was like, hey, he was 22. Yeah. He, like, right. he probably still hadn't even, like, seen a yeah. bloody tampon oh, yet in for his sure. life. He's like, oh, I don't want to think. Vagina. Yeah. You know, he's, like, trying to, like, calm down yeah. himself. <laughs> You know, because who knows? Maybe he's like, I'm saving myself for marriage. Maybe a weirdo. Yeah. You know? And a then, loser freak. And then a person is getting their period in class. That's your authority. And you know who I don't want talking to me about that? The football coach. Oh, yes. A hundred percent. No. And th- this is why I'm here to promote homeschooling. Homeschooling. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Way less fucked up. <laughs> Your parents, oh. they'll get it. God, thank you for writing in. Fuck that teacher. I'm really sorry you had to deal with that. Mm-hmm. Um, all of us are literally perfect, and anyone who tells us we're not can eat shit and a hundred eat more shit. Percent. <laughs> um, if you could go back in time and give your high school self any advice, what would it be? I would say, oh gosh, yeah. <laughs> it's hard. There's so many messages. You can say them all. Oh, gosh. I, I think I would just say, you know, maybe like calm down. Mm-hmm. And calm down. It's not the end of the world, you know, having to fit in now or look a certain way now or like literally there's just – I think the world is bigger, you Mm. know, and it's hard to not be so focused on, oh, my gosh, my life is falling apart, you know, Mm -hmm. because, yeah, you're not like traveling and, you know, your your world is so insular. Yeah, I think if, yeah, you know, I feel like this was like a (laughs) motivational quote or something. People always put it on like a picture of a waterfall, Mm -hmm. like where people are like, Sometimes it's good to remind yourself how small you are. Yeah. You know, yeah. or something like that. I mean, I try and do that constantly. Yeah. I try and just be like, oh, the shit that I'm hung up on or dealing with in my day-to-day life, even today before we started recording, when I was like, I'm grumpy, you mm-hmm, know, it's mm-hmm. like, why? <laughs> this world is so big and my problems are so small and stupid yeah. and trivial. I know, I know. It's hard though, because like I don't go do outdoorsy stuff. Yeah. So it's not like I'm seeing, you know. Yeah. Even a hiking trail, really. I really, I rarely go do things like that. I don't camp and stuff. I mean, neither do I. But okay. sometimes if I just like Google the fucking universe, that's and true. See some telescope <laughs> images. I'm like, damn, I'm small. <laughs> but it really, it really helps to be staring at a mountain. I feel like. Yeah, totally. But like, there are other ways to do it too. I mean, yeah. like. I don't know, sitting and talking with you, like Mm -hmm. talking with people that have completely different experiences than you. It's like, oh, we have two completely different experiences of the world. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. I think that like when you're a teen, you certainly don't have the experience or the perspective to apply that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so that's what I would tell her. Yeah. 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 That's good. Did you go to your senior prom? I did. I did. What did you wear? I wore, I think, a, a, a gosh, is it Betsy? Johnson? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Betsy Johnson dress. Because mm-hmm. I was like, ooh, I like the, you know, I was like, I, I'm not like a gown person. Yeah. Yeah. What, what what did it look like? It was black and white. And, um, you know, it was shaped kind of like 
Is it 50s style? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. pin-up-y. Pin-up-y. It was really, uh, really cute. Geometric. I liked that. Did you go with the boyfriend that lived in Santa Clarita? Yes, I did. I went with Brandon, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Did you have cute pictures? I think so. I'm trying to, oh, wow, that reminds me. I don't know where I've placed them. <laughs> I don't know where they are currently. Yeah, we'll find them. Just, I'll come over. We'll dig through some sure, stuff. Sure. We'll find them. Do you keep everything? Do no! you have a storage unit? No. You no. Know, pictures? You just, is it digital? Do you Let make it digital? Let me tell you a little story. Yeah. My parents divorced, and then my mom died shortly thereafter. Mm-hmm. My dad then moved to another country mm. and put our whole house in storage. Oh. He then called my sister and I <gasps> and said, you can go to the storage unit on this day. You have this whole day to go through everything. You take what you want. Anything else to leave behind, I'm either trashing or donating. Oh. So my sister and I had this day. Oh my God. To basically like sort through. Right. Life. All of all life. Of my life, my parents' life, just all yeah. this shit. I don't know what. <laughs> so then what? the rest, he just, what, yeah, burned? So, so now I have like a box of photos, a big box, like a, you know, a storage box of photos and. That's. Plates and art. And that's kind of it. Whoa. Yeah. And you, my family ooh. wasn't big. We weren't camcorder people. We weren't we weren't big on documenting. Like there are a bunch of photos from when we're babies, because I think that, you know, you are more inclined to take a bunch of photos. Mm -hmm. But then I was really into photography in high school. Mm -hmm. So then like there are a bunch of photos that I took. But for the most part, like, I don't know. I don't have a bunch of sentimental shit. I basically there's kind of like, in kind of an eerie way, there's like no footprint of me from high school wow. because mm -hmm. I got Facebook, I think my senior year of high school mm -hmm. or my junior year of high school, so one of just, those. Yeah. And then when I was a freshman in college, I had it. And then I remember I was dating this guy who was older than me and he got mad at me that he saw a photo of me with like another guy's arm around me. So then I just deleted my Facebook. Whoa. So, like, my whole footprint of, Greta. like, me in high school is gone. Wow. So it's almost like I have, like, that photo of me. Yeah. And then, like, four other photos. And then everything else is just gone. Like, Whoa. dissolved into thin air. And since I was kind of, like, an outskirts person, too, in high school, I'm not really, like, in the yearbook. <laughs> Besides? Well, that I took last year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I created my own. <laughs> I thought... You, you just thought for always... sure this gorgeous girl never ages. <laughs> you don't know. How? Some people don't. 18 to 18. I mean, shoot. Yeah. I, my God. Okay, so that's, okay, you just took that. <laughs> yeah, I just took that. I look like I that. Never... Did you see that? I looked like that. Okay, you look like that. Yeah. That's, I love it. Emo girl. Yes. Brooding artist. Brooding artist. You yes, you know what? That was a share. That was a share for all of the classmates out there who say I never share. That was a big share. Mm -hmm. emotional share mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah god and the final question i have for you on this podcast that's just been a pleasure and joy of my life of is did you have a senior superlative so i found out what that was yeah through your show so you didn't so have like one. in the yearbook yeah yeah i don't think we were calling it that i don't know, maybe they i got most spirited oh wow <laughs> That's a great superlative. You think so? Yes, most spirited. That means you're like this the spark in the school. I think it helped that I was a cheerleader, so they were like, ah, just choose someone from the cheer squad. And there you go. Yeah. Most spirited. Yeah. That's it's iconic. Interesting. interesting. We have not had a most spirited, I don't think. Mm. I Sorry, love my stomach that. is grumbling. Well, your stomach is saying, yeah, we are spirited. <laughs> oh, That's my like, God. Oh. That's so exciting. It, yeah, at the time I was like, whoa, me? Because, I, yeah, I don't know if I – I guess I'm a pretty positive person. Yeah. yeah. And I like to, like, you know, uplift other people. Um, so I don't know. Maybe all of, some of that – Transferred. Came, yeah, came through. Well, speaking of positivity and uplifting people, mm. now I feel like you should plug a very exciting thing that's going to be coming out. Oh, Greta, you're too kind. 
<laughs> Why just die? <laughs> what yeah, if I fall asleep. No, we just the, the episode just like ends right now. No one knows what we're talking about. It cuts to black. The audio just goes. Shh. I've run out of energy. Yeah, I'm like, oh well, I don't know. I'm kind of. Turns hungry out now. she's not the most spirited, y'all. <laughs> <clears throat> um uh yeah yeah my HBO special is coming out in December. Premium motherfucking cable HBO. Mm. HBO. I love HBO. I love HBO. I love HBO. I love HBO to all cameras. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um you're part of the fam. You're I'm part in... of the fam. We're HBO sluts. I will absolutely spread it open raw 100%. dogs for HBO. They can Big fan. You know, we can do a I would I would let them. What is what is a bukkake again? J- Ooh, coming on the face. Is yes, that what that is. Yeah, M- multiple people. Yeah, yes. yeah. You would do that. Do that. You don't have to. You're already in the family. I want it. Like you to continue <laughs> to continue the relationship. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, We're it's gonna be on HBO. HBO family. Yeah. HBO. HBO Max. Yes, it'll be on both. Yeah. What's it called? It's called The Intruder, and yeah, I. Yeah, I've been so exciting working on it, and I'm so excited to share it with the world. Yeah, I'm so excited to watch it. I think I told you a little bit about it because you were like, "What?" <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, where we had an intruder come to our house. Yes, three times in the same day. Yes, you told me and the that's story. Sort of the arc of the show. Yeah, of the hour. Yeah, that's a crazy story. Yeah, it is wild. Yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> Hitting it three times in the same day is nuts. Yeah, where I was like, I think I thought we were going to die because I was like, that's a really brave person. And it was always when we were there. You know, a, per- you, a person, I feel like, usually tries to wait till you're asleep or out of town. Yeah. But knowing we were there, starting Scarier. from 1 p.m., I was like, oh, this person is relentless. Well, because it makes you feel like they want to kill you. Yeah, yeah, where it's it's uh, s- s- sicker than just wanting to steal your TV or something. Yeah. But anyway. Well, now you got to watch it. Everyone has to watch it. That definitely is a, is a you just hooked everyone in. Mm. That's mm. it. We love a hook. Mm. Uh, December 10th. So, yeah. December look out 10th. For it then. December 10th, a mere 15 days before Christmas. Mm. Oh, it's all full circle. <laughs> yeah. I might become, who knows? Maybe I'll renew my vows <laughs> or whatever on the 25th. I'll be like, well, uh, you, I got me a, you got me a special. While we're here. I'm back, Jesus. I'm back, hon. Mm-hmm. Meet you at the pole. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Um, Thank you so much for coming on my show. Thank you for having me. I love chatting with you. I always love chatting with you. I feel the same way, Greta. Big fan. Big fan. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for everyone for tuning into this gorgeous, thrilling, wonderful episode of my podcast. Please like and subscribe. Five stars only. Positive reviews only. You know the drill. And until mm. next week, stay cool. Never change. Ciao. That was a HeadGum Podcast. <laughs>